Good morning and welcome back to our morning devotions here on Facebook Live. And uh, it's another beautiful day in Phoenix. It's warming up nicely. And uh, I'm happy to be able to open the Word of God to you. And uh, I just want to uh, encourage you to turn in your Bible to the book of Jude. And I um, am very mindful of the fact that we need to pray. Um, you know, I believe that Jesus is the answer uh, for this world today. And what people need is they need Jesus. People that really have a sincere relationship with Jesus, uh, they know how to transcend uh, the issues of our day and to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, those that don't have that meaningful relationship with Christ, uh, they deal in hate, they broker in um, their own humanistic way of thought and the truth is that we must be rooted deeply in the word of God and we must be um, reflecting the love of the Lord Jesus Christ in all that we say and we do and uh, that's pivotal if we're going to uh, see any breakthrough and I believe that it has to begin in the church and I think that those that have uh, been here at Freeway and have have I've been around for at least uh, our tenure, 17 and a half years. I know that our desire has been uh, to have a completely integrated ministry that shows love and kindness to every person, assigns dignity to everyone formed in the image of God, and uh, has a passion to reach every man, woman, boy, and girl with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, it was my privilege for many years to a pastor, a church that uh, had uh, people from 50 different countries of the world where that as the pastor, I was the minority in the congregation and, uh, and my dearest friends were all people of color. And uh, I, I continue with that today. And I just, uh, I want you to know that I love you and uh, irrespective of the color of your skin. And uh, I just, uh, I believe that that love conquers all. Um, I want to just share that over the last many weeks, our men have been going through the book of Romans on Tuesday nights, and um, we met again last night, and we wound up having just a great number of men that got online to uh, study the Word of God. And uh, I want to tell you that uh, we had people of every color on our Bible study, and joining hearts together and in Romans 13 we dealt with the law of love and the Bible says in verse 10 of Romans 13 love worketh no ill to his neighbor therefore love is the fulfilling of the law if we would just learn how to do this you see uh, when God gave the Ten Commandments he gave them in two parts. The first four commandments deal with our relationship to God. They are the Godward commandments. The next six commandments are the manward commandments. And Jesus summed them up in two. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And I believe that the six man word commandments are summed up in loving your neighbors yourself. And do you know what? If we could learn simply to do that, to treat others in a way that we would want for them to treat us, to love them in a way that we would want to be loved and to see them as people formed in the image of God for whom Jesus died, it would change everything. But people will never have that perspective until Jesus... Uh, comes to live within them. And I believe that more than uh, anything else, uh, we need to see a revival of Christ in our culture. And that comes through a church that is carrying the gospel into the streets. And uh, I just want you to understand, uh, first, last, and always, I believe Jesus is the answer. And he's the one that's able to effect a change. The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. That's clear. The Bible says uh, 
be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Am I angry at sin? Yes. Is racism sin? Yes. But I'm not going to go out and sin to vent my anger. Uh, I want to uh, embrace what the Bible says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And that's what the Lord calls us to do. Now, um, anybody that contends with those statements has a problem with the Bible, not with me, because I'm giving you what the Bible says. Romans 12, 21, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And, uh, and we've got to understand that. But in the meantime, people need the Lord. Uh, there are people that are dying uh, apart from Jesus Christ, and death is no respecter of persons. God is no respecter of persons. The need of the hour is for God's people to get focused upon the Great Commission and begin to carry it out uh, so that we can overcome all of the things that people are wrestling with uh, in our culture. And, uh, I, you know, I despise systemic racism. I've repudiated it throughout all of my life. And uh, I just, um, I, I think there's a lot of people talking about this, and I think that we need to uh, really uh, have a Christocentric worldview and Bible-centered thinking about how we respond to these things. Now, do you believe that we need to have Christ uppermost in our worldview? Do you believe that the Bible should be the rule book for how we choose to live our lives? If so, then I believe that we're going to dig into the Word of God to find the answers. Uh, we're, we're not going to go to the liberal professors and and uh, out into the streets to try to find answers. We're going to seek the answers from God, and we're going to go to our knees. And there may be a time uh, to do certain things, to to march and to protest. And perhaps in some places and in some cases that's now. But what I believe is, is that Jesus really is the answer. And when he affects a change in the life of a believer, um, he makes that man new. And uh, that man begins to love as Jesus loves. And uh, I've seen that uh, multiplied thousands of times over the last 40 years of ministry. And, uh, and I believe that it's so. But we're in Jude, verse number 20. The Bible says, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, we come in the name of Jesus asking you to effect a healing in our land. God, you said in your word, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then would you hear from heaven and would forgive their sin and would heal their land. And so, God, we, we come to you today with hearts made humble, acknowledging that these issues that we're wrestling with uh, are bigger than one person. And so we need Almighty God to do what no flesh could ever accomplish. God, I pray that you would grant us a divine wisdom as we seek to live a life of honor to thee in difficult days. God, I pray that you would bless this time that we have together in your word, and may you be honored through it 
And this we plead in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. As we deal with the book of Jude, we understand that Jude was writing about a time of apostasy that was to come just prior to the return of the Lord. I believe that it is important for us to recognize that uh, there would be apostates that would come in the name of Christ who would simply, for trying to make a name for themselves, to uh, get money, uh, become preachers. And, and according to uh, Matthew chapter 7, there would be many that in that day of judgment would say, Lord, did we not many mighty works in thy name? And the sad reality is this, that there are many people who are going to follow along behind those preachers like little lemmings because they are teaching a message or giving a message that we want to hear. Uh, Paul said to Timothy, uh, preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And so what we recognize is that we're living in the day that Jude was writing about. In fact, what he calls these preachers is in verse 12, these are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, uh, indicating that the spirit of God is not in them, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out of their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Uh, what a vivid word picture about the end of those charlatans that lead the people of God astray in the name of Jesus. I'm going to ask you a question. Do you think you can spot them? Do you think you know who they are? Can you take the word of God and prove out like the church in Berea that was more noble than the others because they searched the scriptures to see whether the things that were being said were so? You know, I believe that what we're being called to is New Testament Christianity, a Christianity that's going to take the right stand in the right way all the time and uh, not just uh, let their lives be upended, their faith and the, and the exercise of their faith upended uh, because today we're dealing with this, tomorrow we're dealing with that, today it's COVID, tomorrow it's an election, to what, whatever it may be. No, God's people need to be consistent and live their life toward God, not just for the pleasure of men. And so what we find is, look, this Christianity that we're being called to, uh, called to is a personal relationship with God. Yesterday we said it's not a corporate relationship, it's a personal one. And the Bible says there in verse 20, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. And so we've got to have some faith of our own. And uh, listen, I listen to preachers and preaching all the time. Uh, I'm reading continuously to be able to share the word of God uh, nine times a week with the people of God through the ministry of Freeway. And I've got to feed my soul for myself. It's not just for the corporate benefit. It's got to be for my own benefit. And, uh, you know, uh, there are uh, 10 people that live at my home that also attend my church. And if I'm living an ungodly lifestyle, they're not going to want to come. I've got to have some personal faith, not just try to have uh, an act that I put on when I get down to the church house. And so uh, we have to have a personal faith in the living Lord, not just uh, try to get by on somebody else's faith. It's amazing to me uh, how many times when people have difficulty that besets them, the first thing that they want to do is they want to pick up the phone and call someone or they want to go on Facebook. And really the first thing that we need to do is turn to the one 
where that we have our faith in and go to the Lord Jesus go to him in prayer because he's the one ultimately that will give us wisdom the Bible says if any man among you lack wisdom let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given unto them but but we don't do that we want to call somebody to pray for us because we don't feel like we're on praying ground and God wants us to build up our own faith and have that personal, dynamic, living relationship with the living Lord. Uh, we've got to understand that not only is New Testament Christianity personal, but it is prayerful. It's going to be a life that's marked by prayer because the Bible says, praying in the Holy Ghost there in verse number 20. And so here's kind of a synoptic, if you would, of the Christian life and I wonder how Christian our life is if prayer is not a fundamental part of our daily activity. And I believe that we must understand that Jesus said that we're to pray without ceasing. Uh, Jesus said that men ought always to pray and not to faint. And the word there means to quit. Uh, never stop praying. Uh, never give up on the exercise of prayer, which is communing with Almighty God. And so um, we, we ask the question, you know, how's your prayer life? If we excluded breakfast, lunch, and dinner, mealtime prayers, uh, how much meaningful time are we spending with the Lord each day in prayer? And I believe that uh, we have to understand that praying in the Holy Ghost is not praying in another language. Uh, it's praying according to the will of God because the Holy Spirit is, is the spirit of truth. We see that in John 14, 15, 16, and 17 revealed so clearly. And that reveals to us that the Holy Spirit of God will never lead us to do one single thing that's contrary to the revealed word of God. So uh, someone may say, I'm going to go do this. Uh, you know, I feel like the Spirit's leading me. Well, if it's counter to what the Bible teaches, that's not the Holy Spirit that's leading you to do that because the Spirit of God will always, every time, absolutely lead you to do what is consistent with what the Bible teaches. Anything beyond that, it's not the Holy Spirit it's the spirit of Antichrist. But I want you to notice this. The Bible says in verse 21, keep yourselves in the love of God. Now that doesn't mean that I've got to somehow work to make God love me, as some have mistakenly thought. That's not what it's talking about at all. It means that we are to maintain a love relationship with Jesus. The greatest commandment that was ever given was to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. It's the greatest commandment. Everything that is in you is to love God. And so one, one of the things that we must understand is that we can't separate the Christian life from the greatest commandment. And so to love the Lord our God with everything that is within us means that we are going to be passionate about what it is that we're doing. You know, I, I'm passionate about the Lord, so I, I want to tell everyone that he died to save, that Jesus loves them, and that he wants them to spend forever in heaven with him. I care about people that are dying of COVID-19 outside of Jesus Christ. I care about people in the streets of the city that are dying outside of Jesus and, and uh, going to a devil's hell forever. I, I don't want to just get excited and, uh, about social things. I want to be excited about the things of God that are eternal, that are going to make a forever difference. And so I, I want to carry the gospel to every man, woman, boy, and girl, red and yellow, black and white. I care about uh, the children that are dying in uh in the Middle East, in Syria, whose parents are believers that are being killed uh, because they have professed the name of Jesus. I, I care about those poor children that are wandering the streets of, of India that, 
uh, know not the Lord. And, and if someone doesn't tell them, they'll die in their sins. The fact of the matter is that we must be passionate about Jesus. We're commanded to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and strength. And uh, we need to understand that our love and our affection should be set on him. Uh, the Bible says in the book of Colossians chapter 3, um, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ uh, sitteth at the right hand. And then it says, uh, it says, set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. And so I'm commanded uh, to uh, set my affections on things above. I need to be loving the Lord and the things that are eternal, not just the things of this earth, not just the things that are temporal. And so uh, I, I believe according to thus saith the Lord right here, New Testament Christianity in these last days is going to be a personal matter. Of course, we understand that uh, a Christian's life is going to be uh, surrounded by and and lived out through the uh, the the work of the local church. And as you study the Word of God, you just can't uh, remove the local New Testament church from the life of the believer. Uh, it's just not something that you find anywhere uh, in the Scripture. And there are those that really have a disregard and a disrespect for New Testament Christianity as it relates to church because they say, well, you know, I don't like organized religion. Well, can I tell you something? Um, I am a pastor and uh, I sometimes ask people, do you mean to say then that you like disorganized religion? And they're like, no, that's not what I mean. What I mean is, and they don't know how to define it. And I say, you mean you don't like politicized religion? You don't like institutionalized uh, denominational religion, perhaps. And they're like, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. And, and you know what? I don't like that either. So you know what? We need to have our religion modeled after the New Testament, and we need to live out the dictates of the Word of God in a way that demonstrates love to everyone, but carries out the Great Commission. And I want my children to be a part of that. Sunday, I praise the Lord that I had six kids all six of my kids in a church house, loving and serving God because they wanted to be there. All six of my grandchildren were in, in, in the Lord's house. Now, you know what? That doesn't make me any better than anybody. That's just a tribute to the grace of the Lord. But you know what? I am grateful today that my children have had the example of godly people in a church setting uh, to help encourage them and to be godly role models, uh, to, uh, to surround them with the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And every uh, parent should want that for their kids too. And so uh, I think that we need to get passionate about the things of the Lord and begin loving the things that he loves and hating the things that he hates. And, uh, you know, I think that it's important for us to notice also the Bible says here in verse number 21, keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And you know what? I think this New Testament Christian life is not only personal and prayerful and not only is it passionate about Jesus, but it is persuaded. Um, we're looking towards the promise of eternal life. Do you believe that the Bible says all men are going to live forever somewhere, either in heaven or hell? Uh, listen, in hell, it's eternal death, but a person is, has conscious thought. They experience conscious pain. Uh, listen, uh, we've got to be persuaded that what the Bible says is true. Uh, years ago, there was a preacher on TV that was very popular. Uh, he came out of Oral Roberts University, and uh, he uh, uh, was very famous on TBN. And he came to the place where he uh, rejected the teaching uh, of 
the gospel that basically said if someone rejects Christ that they would go to hell. He said, I don't believe that anymore. And uh, he turned away from it. And he, he still has a ministry, uh, albeit the fact is that it has diminished somewhat because of his departure from the truth. But, you know, there are people that in their humanistic thinking say, how could a loving God send anybody to hell? And the answer to that is this. A loving God has done everything to keep people from going to hell. And if someone goes to hell, they have to get there by crawling over the old rugged cross that Jesus died on to keep them from going there. They're rejecting the salvation that Jesus has offered and they're trampling underfoot the blood of Jesus Christ and they reject God's only son as the salvation uh, that could be theirs. And so look, we've got to come to a persuasion that every person, every man, woman, boy, and girl will spend forever in one of two places, either in heaven or in hell. And if you really believe what the Bible teaches, you're going to be persuaded that, look, there's this promise that we can spend forever in heaven with God. And New Testament believers are assured of heaven. And we must be persuaded that, look, we're going to look for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So we understand that it is Titus 3, 5, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration, by the renewing of the Holy Ghost. I believe that. I'm persuaded of that. And like the apostle Paul, who said in 2 Timothy 1 verse 12, uh, when, he, when he says there uh, that, uh, for I, uh, uh, he said, uh, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed for I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. So what we find is Paul had this strong persuasion that the one who saved him was able to keep him forever unto eternal life. And I think we need to come to that and realize that everybody that we know will spend forever either in heaven or in hell. And if you're not certain of another person's eternal destiny, love will lead you to find out. And not just wait till the funeral and say they're in a far better place. And we really don't even know that. Uh, the truth is that there are many people that do that just because they can't deal with the possible uh, outcome that they didn't know the Lord, had no relationship with him, and they might have gone to a place of eternal suffering. And so uh, the Christian life is going to be persuaded that people are going to go one of two places forever, and that is going to shape the position of our life, not just to live for the moment, live for the temporal, but live for the eternal. And then I want you to notice that the Bible says here in verse 22 and 23, and of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. So New Testament Christianity is pitiful. And what that means is our lives will be characterized by a godly compassion and love for others that will make a forever difference in their life. Do you know God wants us to do that, to make a forever difference in the life of others by you telling someone about Jesus so that they may receive him as their savior you have then not just made a difference for now, but you have made a difference forever. And what leads us to do that is love, the love of Jesus Christ. And of some, have compassion. That love of Jesus Christ that moves us. You see, it's not just, I have this strong emotion. No, it's a compassion that leads me into action. The Bible tells us that when Jesus looked upon the multitudes, 
he was moved with compassion. It wasn't just that he felt compassion, he was moved, not just within himself, but he was moved all the way to Calvary. He did something about what he saw, and I believe that in the same token, God's people must look upon the multitudes, look upon your friends, your family members, and understand uh, that uh, it's the love of God that's going to make the difference in their life for all of eternity. And so for when we come to that conviction, our lives are no longer going to be lived just for ourselves, and no longer lived uh, to serve ourselves and our own whims, but to serve the Lord Christ. You know, honestly, uh, if you were awakened in the middle of the night and someone was pounding on your door saying, your house is burning to the ground, get out so that you can be saved. And uh, you have just seconds, really, to think about what it is I'm going to carry out. What is it that you'd grab to take with you? Well, of course, we would take our family. We would wake our children. We would make sure that everybody got out of the house. Or some people, man, the first thing they do is grab their cell phone, grab their laptop, grab their car keys, get their wallet, uh, uh, whatever. And, and, and folks, look, I think a moment like that reveals what our values really are. The most important thing to us should be those people that God has placed into our lives and knowing that they will be safe. But do you know, if they escape a house fire and they die of cancer and they go to hell, have we really served them? Have we really shown them the love that God calls us to give them? You see, God calls us to show compassion and to help, the Bible says, others save with fear pulling them out of the fire, the fires of hell, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh, d despising those sinful things that would pull a person down into the vortex of damnation and, and despising those things that would prevent them from hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you something. There are a lot of people that this week will forsake the gospel of Jesus Christ in favor of a social message and what people need more than they need a social message or a political change is they need Jesus they need Jesus uh, what tell me what is more important than Christ in your life when trouble befalls you when issues arise when trauma comes when difficulty assails you what do you need more than Jesus? New Testament Christianity is pitiful. It'll be char characterized by a love for others that comes from a love for Christ. And then lastly, I would tell you that New T Testament Christianity is praising. Praise will be a natural part of the life of the believer. And the Bible says in verse 24, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Praise God. He's the one that saves us. He's the one that keeps us all the way to glory. And he's the only one that is worthy of our praise worthy of glory and majesty and dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. My friends, God is looking for his people to stand up in this dark hour and be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, to truly live out the biblical dictates of the Christian life so that we can make a true and enduring difference. A difference not just for now, but forever. I don't know about you, but I want to make the kind of difference in people's lives that lasts forever. Uh, I, I want to help them now, but I want to see to it 
that their eternity is secure. Why? Because I really do love them. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. I believe that. Do you? Have a wonderful day.